Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today we'll be doing Robert Chapter 30, Psychosis, Part 1. So, in this Chapter 30, Psychosis, Overconstruction, Part 1, when we come to analyze the psychotic miasm, in relation to the table elements and their respective atomic weights, we find an entirely new grouping of symptoms. So Robert says that when we analyze in depth the psychotic miasm with relation to the table of the elements and the atomic weights, then we find an entirely new group of symptoms. The miasmatic symptomatology can be summarized as follows. So in short, he gives a summary of what the three miasm, sora, syphilis, and psychosis. He says that the soric man manifestations are strongly functional symptoms. So in sora, you'll only get the functional disturbances or those disturbances which are reversible or those pathology which is reversible. Generally, only functional disturbances take place. There is no, there is no irreversible pathology. Or in case any pathology is there, it is always reversible. So the soric manifestation strongly functional symptoms. In the syphilitic manifestations, you get ulceration, destruction of tissue, even with the bony tissue. So in syphilitic manifestations are manifested by the hallmark is destruction and degeneration. So ulceration, destruction, degeneration, destruction of what? Of tissues and even the bony tissues are seen. In psychotic manifestations, you get infiltrations and overgrowth of tissue. So in psychotic manifestations, you are getting infiltration and the overgrowth of the tissue. You get hypertrophy, hyperplasia, and so on. So just to remind you, in soric manifestations, functional disturbances, in, psycho in syphilitic manifestations, totally destruction and degeneration, and in psychotic manifestations, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, edema, infiltration, and overgrowth of the tissue. Thus, the psychotic manifestations are opposite to that of the syphilitic manifestation. So out here, we are seeing that the psychotic manifestation in which there is an infiltration, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, is exactly opposite that to the syphilitic, syphilitic manifestations, wherein you are getting atrophy, degeneration, destruction, paralysis, loss of power, and so on and so forth. So therefore, the psychotic manifestations are exactly opposite to that of the syphilitic manifestations. Therefore, we see that the psychotic stigma presents a problem in physical construction that is the exact opposite of the soric. So we see that when the, when and when the individual has the psychotic stigma, there's some problem in the physical construction of the body that is the exact opposite of the soric. Let us see, it will become more clear as we go on. The soric patient is unable to assimilate sufficient elements from sunlight, air, water, food, etc. for well-rounded physical structure, which is essential to maintain normal health, healthy mind and spirit. So the soric patient is unable to assimilate all the good nutrients which are available from sunlight, air, water, food, etc which is essential for the physical structure as well as to maintain a normal good health in mind and body. The psychotic patient is too susceptible to the available constructive elements he sees upon and assimilates them to the point of, of the overgrowth of the tissue. But in the psychotic patients, they are very susceptible to whatever constructive elements are available and it assimilates to the point of overgrowth and tissue. So in the soric, in the soric stigmata, there's an inability to assimilate the food, the air, the sunlight, all the nutrients from all these important sources. Whereas in the psychotic stigmata, there, there is an assimilation, but the point of overgrowth. This, if this is so, it explains the reason for pathology in all parts of the body. It is manifested by overgrowth of natural tissue and infiltrations. Thus, we are almost always able to trace the psychotic trait. So therefore, it says, Robert says that in psychosis, this explains the reason for the pathology. Why? Because there's a hypertrophy, hyperplasia of the 
of the of the parts of the body, the skin, the mucous membrane, the serous membranes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which gives rise to the pathology. And it's and it is manifested by overgrowth of natural tissues and infiltration. So whatever natural tissues are there, they they show hypertrophy, hyperplasia, as well as infiltration, stasis, and edema. Thus we thus we are almost always able to trace the psychotic trait. So therefore. With all these symptoms of hypertrophy, hyperplasia, and stasis, overgrowths, we can easily trace the psychotic taint or the psychotic stigmata in the body. The necessary elements for physical constructions are supplied in a lavish manner by nature, in the form of fresh air, sunshine, fresh foods, vegetable, and nuts. So whatever necessary elements are there for the proper physical construction of the body, they are supplied by nature in the form of fresh air, sunshine, in fruits and vegetables and nuts. Even the fresh seafood and animal tissue which adapt for our food are included. Even the seafood and animal tissue are included, which are necessary elements for the physical construction. McCollum tells us that the case that in the case of manganese, a small amount is required in a daily food. So McCollum tells us that. In a case of manganese, only a small amount is required in our daily food. It is very difficult to prepare a diet entire, entirely free from the element for experimental purposes. So, McCollum says that it is very difficult to prepare a diet which is entirely free from the element of manganese for experimental purposes. But in our daily diet, there is an excess of the substance. And yet the healthy normal system absorbs only the amount required to maintain a good state of health. But McCollum says that manganese is found in our diet and it is found in excess. But the normal healthy system of the body will only absorb that amount which will enable the individual to have a good state of health. So that's all in this part. Part two will be coming up. Hope you all understand the chapter which I explained in simple terms. Please do share, comment and like the video. And also do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your patient listening.